Hi, my name is Ethan. I'm doing the individual taxonomy on the pocket gophers, which are also burrowing mammals, which kind of goes into the niche of the pocket gophers that relate to other burrowing mammals or even such as burrowing insects, just like the earthworms that can also kind of invade the soil and in a way it can benefit, but also harm the soil depending on how you look at it. They also adapted to digging in one of their niches and they're also subterranean ecosystem engineers, which shows kind of how they affect the soil and that they can truly affect even things like of how water gets infiltrated or how like with the soil and how mineral uptake does happen within like plants uptaking the minerals. And it's like saying if they're creating like tunnels and stuff, being subterranean ecosystem engineers, how this might affect of how like there's empty holes and like little roads that kind of like the plants can't cross with their roots so they don't really get some of those uptakes of whether it be like in obvi obviously agricultural uh fields um and my grandpa definitely deals with some of that stuff just because he used to be a farmer and around his area it's more on the outskirts of town very far out more near some of those agricultural fields that kind of shows of how like the like pocket gophers can kind of affect the way they're burrowing and in this life history that of the pocket gophers they deal with like creating mounds that also damage the soil because these mounds can kind of build up from all the habitats that they might create underneath all like the like burrowing tunnels that they create that affects the way everything is kind of structured in the soil especially with like agricultural fields kind of affects of how just some of those fields if they're able to get a high yield or if they're supposed to get maybe something lower just because of a uh, the pocket gophers kind of the way they burrow if that affects of the nutrient uptake, the water filtration of the soil, just kind of how it shapes the land, the way they affect it. Um, there's also some hybrid zones that are established to answer some taxonomic like kind of questions. There's different breeds, I would say, of pocket gophers that kind of, you know, whether it be, you want to say territory, on how they determine of where they're located, their foraging space, kind of stuff like that. And the nature of like hybridization to determine like kind of evolution this is kind of like saying of how just of how the hybrids and how it's helped them evolve in a way but also you know those hybrid zones kind of affect of how different ones have evolved at different paces how they have interacted in different ways that might be a little bit not working well together to coexist so if they like come together they might butt heads more than anything than actually helping each other in this sense and then some of the population dynamic dynamics, you have seasonal trends, obviously, in the burrowing in the soil temperature or in like rainfall or winter. Because obviously when you're in the winter, some of the soil, you got the top soil, that's gonna be a little bit more frozen. And as you go down the soil profile, you're gonna have it where it gets a little warm. So that's maybe where they try to stay at when they're getting towards that area of trying to make like a habitat if they're trying to hibernate. But then you also have where, say if, um, a burrowing mammal like the pocket gophers if they try to actually stay uh like they didn't make it in time by it got frozen of the topsoil that they might try to scurry towards somewhere that's actually nearby of a building that might keep them actually warm for the time being till it comes to the summer um and then they can actually like still get some foraging items well or like try you know create a little bundle within an area like my grandpa for his area i'd say it's about like maybe five acres i'm not too sure of actually its measurement but he has a couple of barns that they might be able to actually burrow into so that they can actually use that for a temporary space. But obviously when you get into the summer for those like seasonal temperatures, you have it where it's going to be a little bit warmer up top and a little bit colder, like you go down the profile a little bit more. So if they find that happy medium within that in order to kind of store some stuff, um, you know, kind of in their population dynamic, of course, with about like 75% of like females that have like the ability to produce litters, of course, that that might be the optimum space for them to actually reproduce in this sense, because then it's the most, you know, natural where it's gonna make the newborn feel the most comfortable kind of thing. And the fertility for them is about 3.75 per adult female. Uh, per year so this is actually pretty good i mean it's not like a one-to-one -one ratio which i would say is good obviously you can't produce half a person or three-fourths of a person in this instance so i'd say this is very good just to the sense of they have the ability to continue on with it 
but this kind of creates a sense of are they a rodent or like you know an insect kind of thing just to say that they're more of a pest and a problem um then instead of looking at a solution of to solving something which it definitely depends on how you look at it and how you view it because you can see light and dark within both situations kind of thing um next kind is talking about competition predation i've actually been in a way involved in this because at my grandpa's place he had a fire pit some of the metal of course doesn't burn right so i had a rusted up wrench in my hand and i was kind of the predator in a way just because i saw a pocket gopher on the ground right and i took my like the wrench that was rusted up and ripped at it right hands orange of course from that um but at that sense, when I threw it, I felt some remorse, of course, because I didn't feel good about trying to kill something, right? Um, so I stopped immediately what I did. And in that happening, I watched as it had its own plan of how it's going to evade from attacking me, right? So when it did that, I watched as it kind of scurried a little around. And then it actually, from what I saw, where it bur burrowed, buried in, um, that I didn't expect it to kind of go in that way because... I didn't see any hole because usually with a pocket gopher, I've seen like it, like I would say about that hole, like it's been a decent size for how they go into, right? So when they did that, I was kind of shocked on like how its ability to evade. But it kind of shows that like at this moment in time, for like during predation, like they're definitely most vulnerable for looking to like foraging when they're on the ground surface, right? Just because. Of course, it can be very visible and like if they're trying to find something on the ground surface compared to being burrowed in the soil. And this kind of also goes into like how they don't have a bunch of like, like their fur and stuff that can really like be coloration that conceals them, kind of helps them hide within the grass. It's kind of like, um, <laughs> like, um, trying to think of how to really say it. Um, a rabbit getting like an engine blow on it. And now black smokes on it it was like a white rabbit in the snow but now it's like easy to see for like a hawk so it comes down and catches it it's kind of like saying that that it's very easy to see of how it looks and that it's going to be easy for them like for a predator to catch um and there's not much competition between similar species kind of thing within that nature of hybridization i was talking about and its life history of the pocket gophers but there are differences that can result in some imbalance of the environmental tolerance or behavior just of how they interact with the soil and different relations within the species that are not just burrowing mammals or just, you know, that are kind of all around the area and how they interact with them. And there's also this myth that installing barn owl nests predates on gophers. That was found to be a myth, of course, like I said before. Um, and some of the sources I used was a two parapatric species of pocket gophers um, from T.A. Vaughn. I hope I'm saying that right. Then also in the article of population dynamics and bioenergetics of fossorial rodents, the northern pocket gopher. Um, this just goes to really say of how, when it says rodent, I think in that article really goes to say of how we view pocket gophers just because of how they kind of disrupt our, what I consider like anthropocentric views. And then also like, you know, but they're just doing like, like it's, you might like it if it's like biocentric views going more environmental ethics, but I think that's something kind of important to consider of how you definitely look at them. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, have a great day and appreciate you watching this.